Ladies and gentlemen, this is RPT season number nine, episode 110. It is Wednesday, December 1st, year of our Lord, 2021. I am your host, Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. What up, everybody? There's a lot going on. We're going to make fun of it. We're going to talk so much crap about all this craziness going on. Um, I have a couple events. I'm, my tour is over. However, I am going to be hosting for Terrence K. Williams, December 4th. Uh, they rented the theater at uh, U of H. I think it's called like the Cu- the Cullen Theater or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, U of H, December 4th, Terrence K. Williams, Chingo Bling. Uh, and then December 10th, there's this uh, really cool pilot we shot like, pff, what, two years ago maybe? Almost. It's finally going to be out on Amazon. And uh, December 10th, we will be doing a screening. So get more info on that. Uh, the show is going to be called Just The Bit. Really cool, really fun. On today's show, we're going to be talking about the Rogan Jocko podcast. So Very good. epic. So I'll good. tell you how many times I listen to it. <laughs> uh, Omarion, I mean Omicron, Omicron is here, and it's named after the 15th letter in the Greek alphabet. We'll tell you why they skipped over the other letters. Uh, the message regarding the new variant. Mm-hmm. Got mm-hmm. a special video with a special message about the new variant. Oh, man, I can't wait. Um, uh, obviously, Ghislaine, J- Ghislaine Maxwell, Ghislaine, 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 Ghislaine. I like Ghislaine. Ghislaine Maxwell. Appropriate. Uh, her, she's in she's in court right now. Um, man, I just want her to list some motherfucking names. Just tell us Bill Gates was on the goddamn plane already. Who else was on the motherfucking John Legend? Dude, you Chrissy know, Teigen. A hundred percent. Yeah, did you watch that video by chance I sent yesterday? Had you seen it before with the ABC anchor who uh, was oh, yeah. on the hot mic? Yeah, I she's totally like, we've been had this story. Years ago. And they said Alex Jones, uh, d- dog, can you turn my headphones up? Oh, I yeah. think I got earwax or something. <laughs> I think Jesus. We'll, what do you, is this, this one one? Yes. How's Sorry, that? y'all. They're like, y'all should have did a test before y'all came up in here. Um, <laughs> How's that? So much better. Okay. I, I need to, how do you get earwax out of your ears? Somebody let me know in the Discord. You ever done one of those things where you do the, is it like the neppy pod or what is it? Where you go up from one ear and you let it drain out the other one? Whoa. You ever done that? Neti pods do that? I believe so. I could be mistaken, but yeah, it, it, whatever it's called, you're supposed to put it whatever the solution it is inside one ear and let it drain out the other side. No shit. Yeah. I didn't even know them hoes connected. Um, so here we are. Ghislaine Maxwell, she's in court. Also, Twitter got a new CEO. They, yep, they started yep. changing some rules around to where you can't post like, oh, look, they, uh, they are protesting in New Zealand. Wait, what? Like uh, Twitter CEO, he, there's a new rule. There's a new guy. They came in real calm, real fast. Um, basically, here, if you want me to like, everybody and their mom is tweeting about the shit. Uh, how do I find that? <clears throat> Everyone and their mom, but I can't find it. So the new guy's name is Praga Agral. Yeah, and, there, and, and people on the right are circulating one of his tweets, and then people on the left are trying to give it context. Like, he was quoting something, and it doesn't mean he's anti-white people. Okay, here, at Twitter Safety, they said, Beginning today, we will not allow the sharing of private media, such as images or videos of private individuals, without their consent. Publishing people's private info is also prohibited under the policy, as is threatening or incentivizing others to do so. So basically, um, they're turning into YouTube and Google, enacting policies that make the site unusable, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, the fate of every tech behemoth is protecting and moderating their way into oblivion. This is a bad policy for reporting in particular and worse for the future of content in general. So basically, like, uh, independent journalists are going to have a hard time posting anything. Like, if you're out there like, oh, my God, we're out here in Kenosha, and look, at they burn burning shit. But like, ah. You can't show that guy looting because you don't have his permission. What? Basically, right? I don't know how they're going to be able to... Uh, Basically. I mean, you got all kind of other weird stuff on their platform, but they ain't worried about that. You know, speaking of writing and stuff, it's not on the on today's notes, but I don't think we really talked about how the media had just uh, kind of glossed over the fact that that guy that was in the SUV that ran over all those people, they just kept calling it an SUV, like yeah. an SUV plowed through a crowd of people. <clears throat> if he was white... Oh, if he was That'd be the white. lead. That'd be the lead. If he was a white boy, if he was a white boy with a motherfucking NRA sticker on his SUV, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be saying <laughs> a car plowed into people, a car accident, a car drove, uh, memorializing the day a car, a car. <laughs> They'd have been like crazy domestic terrorist insurrectionist white supremacist. Instead, he was a black supremacist. Straight up. Straight up black supremacists. They didn't bring up none of the little raps, the tweets, all the posts, uh, him ranting and raving. Well, they couldn't. They deleted his account. 
and, and not only that, he had other pages. And it's just, it's highly documented. And check this out, man. I tweeted, I think it was last night, basically saying, like, it's hard out here for white people, man. <laughs> of course, all the raza, all the Latinx. As he's doing that, he's, 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 t- he's tweeting with uh, one and he's doing that with the other hand. I'm like, wait a minute, my, my Twitter dry right now. <laughs> here, I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you right now because all the little brown victims are like, shut up, fool. You're a disgrace, homie. Um, because I retweeted Turning Point USA where Charlie Kirk basically told a little Latino that asked the question, like, you're, you're saying that affirmative action, something, something. Charlie Kirk went in. It was like, actually, you have privilege. You have preference. And he gave examples. He's like, this airline, that airline, they're looking for more brown pilots. This black, school, it's in this population uh, percentage. This, this job. Yeah, we didn't, he didn't even get into the colleges. Oh. Um, these corporations will hire you on the spot if you're black or brown. But if you're white, they got to get approval from upper management. Scott Adams talks about it all the time where he had to like literally leave a job more than once where he couldn't get the promotion. It was like, it's too many white guys in upper management. We're, they're on our ass. We didn't even play that video a couple weeks ago where the guy, the white guy, was trying to get the monoclonal antibodies, and he was recording, and the lady was like, well, if you were of another you know, racial background... If you were black, or you, if basically. You were, if you were Mexican-American or black, and he said, even with my age and all my stats, like all my numbers are the same, I'd have to literally be another race in order to get the therapy. And she's like, yeah, that's sorry. That's because that's you're not an endangered... F- whatever. Like, like COVID affects... Somehow, the way we interpret the data, the policy is these people need it more than y'all. So, by definition, that's racism. In that situation, whoa, <laughs> in that situation, you don't want to be white if you're trying to get these monoclonal. This is in Texas. Oh, what, it was in Texas? That was in Texas, oh, bro. Shit. So, we could sit here. I didn't go back and forth with all these people on Twitter, but like, for example, the Waukesha, uh, Waukesha. Fuck, yeah, we, Waukesha. <laughs> Uh, mass murderer, black supremacist, domestic terrorist, literally all kind of evidence. Because he's black, the 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 media is like, um, well, could we talk about something else? Is there something else going on? Like, it was an advantage for him to be a BLM, like super anti-white, pro-black. And then there's this thing called Twitter Spaces where it's like hella racism. <laughs> Um, their new little audio feature? dude it, it's almost like a clubhouse type right of thing. that shit was trending it was like mayo monkeys uh white gorillas they uh vanilla something like all these little pages and names and discussions how my white people were raised in caves and y'all are savage it was like some nick cannon type shit you know what i'm saying but how does nick cannon still have a job um he, he's good at producing um tv i guess <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. He stood me up for a meeting uh, years ago <laughs> never about wild and out. I ain't never forgot that shit. Um, oh, look, this is what I tweeted. Real talk is rough for my Caucasian brothers right now. Everybody blames you for everything and you have to lie on college applications just to get a fair shake. Uh, and of course, I had to mute a couple of people. Uh, let me look, find the reply. Um, OK, here's an example. Uh, sorry, I'm jumping around. I found one of those spaces thing you oh, diving into the spaces no i just seen it trend oh, okay, dude okay, it was okay. trending and wouldn't nobody call it racism you know what i'm saying why because it's black people saying it right if it's black people saying it it's like well you know they they infant what's the word infanticide infantilize like almost like treat black folk like children like saying like no deja los pobrecitos right. let them it's like you're perpetuating this victim shit it's like hey we're all human we're all adults we're all mature we're all gr- we're all grown like, stop treating people like children. I really wish that's, that's disrespectful. It is. And I wish we knew exactly what the demographic age-wise was of the people that are, like, they're super susceptible to this. You know, like, is it really just really young people? Are we talking about, like, 16 No, it's a lot to- of old. No, it's, every, it's a lot of people. It ranges up until, up until the 60s, 70s. Yeah, but we, oh, I see the older people being the ones that are like the ones perpetuated. They're the ones that are rallying. They're the Maxine Waters that are perpetuating these messages. And like, who are they speaking to? Like, are they speaking to other 50s and 60 year olds? Or, or are they talking to the younger audiences that are falling for it? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know how much um, Maxine Waters resonates with the youth. Well, she's out there in them streets talking about we need to get more, you know, aggressive and confrontational. Nah, she need to go sit down somewhere. Okay, look, this person told me, you need more Nick Fuentes and less Charlie Kirk, brother. Don't become one of these cringe, quote, own the lib guy. 
Who the fuck's Nick Fuentes? Uh, I think he's a guy that's on a no-fly list after going to, I don't know, he must be a thought leader oh, okay. of some sort. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, this kid just just really read into my tweet and said, don't become one of these cringe own the lib guy. I just, if you start to pay attention, and, and for example, if uh, Kyle Rittenhouse was black, mm-hmm. Maybe he wouldn't have been up against so much going into trial. It probably would have been like a heroic young black man had to fend for his life as uh, three white boys, uh, you know, try to bash his head in with a skateboard. And uh, he killed the pedophiles. And uh, it was all at a BLM thing. And uh, congratulations, Mr. Um, you know, Khalif. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Pick he, the he, name he, wisely. Uh, instead of Kyle. <laughs> Khalif. You know what I'm saying? Khalifa. Uh, Ka- um, Khaled. Khalid. Yeah, and then somebody else tweeted me, poor white folk, with a little tear, like almost being sarcastic, I guess. But guess what, man? If you start to pay attention, you know, there's a lot of evidence out there. There's been plenty of times on this show where I'd be like, oof, I'm glad I ain't a white boy. <laughs> yeah. Oof, I'm glad I ain't a white boy. They gunning for y'all. They coming for y'all, boy. They Like Kyle Rittenhouse, I told everybody, they wanted to lynch that white boy. Yeah. They wanted his head on a stake. They wanted his head on someone's desk, like, like motherfucking Hunter's be having deer and shit speaking of uh white boys with nra stickers though i sent you that picture yesterday of one of our neighbors down the street oh, yeah yeah dude yeah. i didn't even notice this until i don't know maybe like a week ago we usually don't go out once it's dark like we just stay home we have shit to do we don't go nowhere and it, it you know it gets dark at like 6 30 now 5 30 anyway we drive around the neighborhood we're coming in and i was like does that say let's go and it was lit up in christmas lights said let's go they didn't put the branding on it no they just put the fucking they, they reused their christmas decoration that they were hanging from the, the roof of their house and they dressed it up i think in an american flag with the aviators and a mask on it's a skeleton and it's let's go brand and i was like that's hilarious dude it was like halloween because <laughs> they had a skeleton fourth Mix, of july. Mixed with fourth of july Makes a Christmas. <laughs> They're so funny. Dude, so, they get uh, down, too. Yeah, man. That's why I want to move to the birds, man. Get up out of cities, dog. Until that Section 8 comes out there for us. That, too. They, what is it, urban housing, urban development. Um, all right. So, Joe Rogan and Jocko Willink. If y'all have not listened to that podcast, get on Spotify. Just listen. Commit three hours. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Clean your house. Clean out your closet. Do something. Do some winter cleaning. Do something. Go for, I don't know, go for a jog. Do a couple things. You could do a lot of things in them three hours. They started off hot, man. They, they went right for Like, within 20 minutes, they're talking about election integrity, and they're talking about a lot of really Mail-in important... ballots. Dude, it's so bizarre. And it's not like Rogan goes, like, maybe as deep as we do on a lot of these subjects, but to hear him over the last decade now talking about the things he's talking about in the way, in the passionate way that he's talking about it. Like, he's always been, like, second amendment. Like, he was talking about earlier with... Uh, with uh, Atia, the, the the physician guy that was on that also likes to hunt, that he bought his first gun in like 1994. He bought a Glock in like 1994 that he still owns. Always been 2A, always been pro America, obviously. And never really thought about things the way that like the left from today, 2021, is seeing things. But to have him now talking about, you know, Trump's not the best, but he's not the worst. You know, he talked about this, that, and the other. And he's talking about trade. We're talking about like logistics and stuff, supply chains. And it's just really fascinating Everything. to see where this guy's come. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, dude, he was dropping truth bombs. Um, he even brought up the uh, Ray Epps, the leader of the Oath Keepers, the militia guy who's a fed. And while everybody else is getting indicted for this January 6th, um, he's scot-free. Why? Because there's, I mean, he's a provocateur. He's probably working for the CIA or the FBI or somebody. Allegedly. Allegedly. And um, the whole time they were talking about it, I'm like, I'm like, revolver.news. I'm like, Ray Epps. The leader of the Oath Keepers. He's like, who's the guy, Jamie? Jamie be Googling shit. Jamie, get off Google. Jamie be like, I just found something where it says that he wasn't there. And it's like, uh, I don't know, it's a link to a thing from a Reddit that says... They even mentioned Revolver, didn't they? Maybe eventually I think when, got when Homeboy it. had to duck, duck, go, yeah. some shit. But the whole time I was yelling, I'm like, Darren Beatty at Revolver.News broke this story probably eight months ago. It's a dude named Ray Epps, leader of the Oath Keepers. And like the J6 thing, that January 6th thing, they got these people rotting in American Guantanamo, in yeah. Gitmo. They got these boys in D.C. They ain't seen the light of day. Meanwhile, you got, you're giving everybody bail. Like like that guy, uh, what's his name? Daryl Brooks, the guy that in Waukesha. Oh, the one that drove through the car. Uh, they, they, you're supposed to say Waukesha, but Waukesha. I'm gonna call it Wokesha. Wokesha. You know what I'm talking about? And um, 
that boy was out on bail after running over his baby mama at a gas station, thousand dollar bail. You know what I'm saying? Like career criminal. Meanwhile, you got these people that were just wrong, wrong time, wrong place. I mean, they all deserve due process, right? It's like each individual, right? Like, okay, if you were trespassing, hit him with the trespassing charge already, right? You know what I'm saying? If this guy did a felony, hit him with the felony. You know, hit him with the charge, and see if there's gonna be bail bond, and have them talk to the lawyers, be able to make phone calls to the family. No, they got him in American Guantanamo Bay, and the American public have has no idea what is that. Dude? Is that a helicopter? Dude, I always feel like it's just going to fall on the studio, I swear. The feds, Every man. time I hear helicopter. Speaking of January 6th, uh, we're going to jump around on this list a little bit. That's fine. Um, there's a clip, brother. It's like 20 minutes long. Don't we always do that? Andrew Schultz, yes. Andrew Schultz and Charlemagne the God, they have a show called Brilliant Idiots. Right. Right? <sighs> Boy, this shit made my blood pressure go Oh, up. tell me about it. Oh, my God. I stopped God. listening to it. Honestly, I stopped listening to Brilliant Idiots over a year ago. Okay, well... Um, I listen to Flagrant too, and I wouldn't be surprised if Brilliant Idiots isn't a show much longer. Ah, uh, you should read the comments at least. Um, I even sat Mighty Soul down because I was telling her about it. I was like, "Man, you should have seen Schultz's face when he's just like, it just looks it's it's it." Break it down for okay, me, man. So, what, so what, what is, it? is it a Schultz clip is, or is it the episode? There's a 20 minute clip, but let me just set okay, it up real okay. quick uh, if you want to skim through it. Okay. All right. So there's a clip from Brilliant Idiots. It's like a Zoom version, right? With their zooming in. And uh, I'm not a mind reader. Oof, I, that makes it worse. I, yeah. I'm not a mind reader, so I don't want to be like, Schultz looked annoyed, you know? But Schultz stood his ground and had to literally say, hey, guys, let's not act like, you know, stores were getting boarded up over nothing. Like, let's not act like it was all peaceful. You know, he's like, I'm sure that the people that organized the march, they probably had good intention intentions, but you got other people coming in fucking shit up. And uh, and he had to explain to Charlemagne and the, and the other guy. He's like, bro, he shot some little pedophile people. And Charlemagne's like, well, we shouldn't have to bring that up because, you know, they do that to black people all the time when they start bringing up their old record. And it's, he's like, nah, if you a pedophile and some shit go down, it's because, you know what I mean? Fuck you. <laughs> and, um... Schultz had to basically inform them of all the shit that the media, like the media created this whole other thing where it's like illegal gun. Uh, you know, the, the boy's mama dropped him off and, you know, packed him a lunch and sent him on his way with an AR. And he went into harm's way looking for trouble. And, and why would he be trying to defend a, a, a business that ain't his? You know, the same reason I had to block a family member <laughs> trying to send me TikToks and shit. Talking about Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> Uh, everybody that support Kyle Rittenhouse on the right, they doing it because of race. Because the minute Kyle said, I support BLM, he lost a lot of support. And that's proof. And I'm like, what? Anyway, did you find the clip? Uh, Maybe just skip through is, it. Is it the one from 10 months ago? Or is it recent? No, it's recent. Because they talking about Kyle Rittenhouse. Put like, brilliant idiots, Kyle Rittenhouse. And uh, Sh Charlemagne was like, they need, oh, to, they need to charge the mom. He says, uh, I'm all about self-defense. He says, I wish Trayvon Martin had something on him. You know, he'd have had his self-defense. And I wish Ahmaud Arbery would have had something on him. And Nipsey Hussle and Young Dolph and all these people. It just brought in a whole bunch of shit. Okay. And Schultz was basically saying, bro, the media, he's like, a lot of this shit is fake. Be careful what you get outraged about. You know, they're just setting you up for failure. They're not giving you all the facts. And again... Kyle Rittenhouse is a white boy. If he if he was anything else, you know, the, the narrative, the CNN would have been like, how are we going to analyze this? It's weird to hear him say, well, Charlemagne will say things like, you know, the media this, the media that. They're a big part of the quote unquote corporate media as far as the Breakfast Club and like what Charlemagne does. Mm -hmm. But he, he always puts, he kind of pushes it off onto like just the, the ABC, NBC kind of media. He doesn't count himself in that stratosphere of like, we have that many, if not more listeners anyway. Yeah, man. Um, it, it's just unfortunate. It's annoying when people love chiming in on stuff and don't even know nothing about the case. That's that's he's like, oh, I found out to stand in front of your store too. Uh -huh. yeah, if it, You'd if be it was grateful. His, if, if it was his storefront or his family's storefront, completely understand. Other than that, who the fuck is paying you to protect these buildings? <laughs> Nobody. But that's that's charity work. Yeah, man. We, uh, like, we, 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 we can win it for we a gotta, day. We gotta you know? stop yeah. acting like we gotta stop acting like motherfucking storefronts were getting weren't getting vandalized. Like just in San Francisco the other day, they broke into the Louis Vuitton store. A few people. I be wilding right now. And it's just like, hey, 
I'm with you, but I'm not standing in front of no Louis store with no gun telling people get away from this Louis store. 100%. You aren't. But if somebody wanted to, you think Louis would be upset? They'd be like, by all means. Please. Nah, 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 I get it. I get it. Listen, I'm not, uh, what, what, whatever Kyle was into, that's what he's into. I mean, it kind, it's kind of weird, right? Because it goes back into, uh, you know, even what we talk about when we say people, you know, want to disclose all this information about themselves, right? When As they get older. It's like, I don't knock, whatever is going through people's minds is going through people's minds. I have no idea why Kyle Rittenhouse at 17 years old felt like, he wanted to go protect Bill. Because he ain't, he's a nerd. He ain't got no pussy. He's trying to attach <laughs> himself. Pause it real quick. He's a little he ain't fucking no girl loser, dog. Uh, play the last minute. Just to see how Schultz stood his ground. Like the very, yeah. Mm -hmm. The last minute. Yeah, right, like the see, last minute. It's 12. We'll start right here. Jim, for and, their rights want. That's what these that's bad right. actors are doing to ruin that and tarnish it. It's almost like what's you, you using the struggle for black rights as a smokescreen so you could break into the fucking Louis store. Yeah, and a lot of it is Cointel Pro too. Don't act like Cointel Pro Hell don't exist. Yeah. They actually Hell they have yeah. agitators who go to these protests just to cause trouble. Notice I didn't say that they were I didn't say that they were uh black people necessarily. Of yeah, course they're sure. black, they're white, they're everybody could do it, but the bitch that was walking out the fucking store with the cheesecake, that got nothing to do with with uh civil rights. That got nothing to do with equality. Yeah. Listen, I agree. I agree. But <laughs> he just the looks away and rolls Go buy you a motherfucking gun. <laughs> you don't got one already. Go buy you and guns learn. and be careful what they tell you to be uh, passionate about. Be careful what they tell you to be angry about because this shit is fake, dude. This shit is all um, fucking fake. I, I, I'm not going to say it's fake. I just want people to always have all the information. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean, to be honest, Says the okay. guy. Says yeah, the guy that don't I mean, know I mean, shit. Like, if they could lie about us going to war in Iraq, you don't think that they could lie about <laughs> something happening in the country? You know of course. We never went to Iraq. All the time. It's what they do. They do it all the time. People we never went to Iraq and fought in Iraq? <laughs> yes, we did go to fight in Iraq. <laughs> okay, Schultz. Okay, all out. right, Schultz. Dude, I'm going to say this, bro. When it comes to this Kyle Rittenhouse thing, right? I think one of the, there's so many misconceptions, and that, that's what's so annoying, right? Because people, people that don't tune into RPT, they're just in the dark. Right. They have no idea. They're just getting spoon-fed bullshit. They're getting a, an opinion assigned to them from the mainstream corporate media. One of the biggest discrepancies is these were um, white allies who were out there on behalf of uh, Black Lives Matter, and they were marching on behalf of black lives in, in, um, in solidarity, and they were there, and they were there for black lives. Versus uh, some people like to go fuck shit up. One of them was arguably suicidal. Like he had just got out of the mental thing like from a suicide attempt. And he kept telling everybody, shoot me, N-word. Shoot me, N-word. Shoot me. He was telling people, shoot me, shoot me, shoot me. Well, he fucked up and, and chasing, found out. Yeah, exactly. And then chasing the guy with the AR. And then the other two are like straight up Antifa. You know what I'm saying? Like there's two totally different narratives. One half of the country sees these little white boys that, that were shot. And first of all, they don't know that they were white. Uh, two, they think that they were there peacefully and they were just attacked. They were attacked by Kyle Rittenhouse, a, a vigilante, a vigilante uh, militia kid. So I, I need Kyle to sue everybody. For facts, right? Uh, we posted that one uh, image yesterday from uh, I forgot what university it was. Might have been Arizona that they were they held a rally yesterday or yes. whatever the fuck. I, I, we didn't see. I didn't see videos from it. Who knows? It might have been five people. Might have been five hundred people. But it was like the it was like socialist students of America or some shit mm -hmm. trying to get Kyle kicked out of whatever campus or school that he's going to. Uh, anyway. We we're talking going back to Jocko and, and uh, Rogan. Jocko was using a couple of terms that I've used over the last year myself, as far as like the pendulum swinging in the other direction. He said that a few times, and I honestly feel that way. And the more and more you and I talk about it, other shows that you know we kind of uh, keep up with, talk about it, and then Rogan every ep every other episode or so, he has a guest within that world of uh, cultural you know situations and politics or whatever. And like Jocko said, the good thing about mobs is that they inevitably eat themselves. As we saw all about with the the looters that were looting, and then other they were fighting with other looters. What, did you see that video? You know, mm -hmm. that's that's starting to happen everywhere. Like there's the narratives are all crumbling around everywhere. The people are awake, not woke, but they're waking up to what's going on, and they're like, 
some of them are like, man, I fell for it. You know, they got me. Mm. Others are doubling down. You know, your uh, what's the late show guy that we always shit on? Stephen Colbert. Oh, they're Colbering it uh, up. Mark Ruffalo, the mm. actor. Oh, <laughs> goofy. I, I was uh, going in on him a long time ago, man. Uh, I goofy. Like, Bro, I was on his timeline looking for some shit. Oh, and you I, don't have to go very far. It was all weird, like Greta, like let's... Everyone listen to Greta, bro. The ozone layer. It's so bro. weird, man. Uh, Dave Batista, man. I fucking love Dave Batista from the WWE days to, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy character in the Marvel Universe and all that. But have you seen his Twitter? Mm-mm. Oh, bro. Well, anytime motherfuckers start working for Disney and Marvel, it seems like either Disney only hires woke motherfuckers or they turn you woke. Well, the irony is that you have, he plays Drax, right? Who co-stars with Chris Pratt. You know, you literally have polar opposites as the main stars of the movie. Chris Pratt's like, fuck all this woke shit. I'm, you know, Christian, blah, 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 standing my ground. And then you have Dave Bautista, who he goes so hard on people and fans and stuff. Let me just show you what his, uh, what his Twitter bio says real quick. He, him. <laughs> Hopefully he hasn't changed that man, it. look here, bro. Uh, Bautista, you need to put, like, some common sense in them steroids you take. <laughs> Whatever kind of steroids you want, mix in, mix in a little bit of constitution. Throw some patriotism mixed in with your steroids. Oh, he still has it. Wait, wait, wait. I lost it. Give me a second. <clears throat> what do you got? He, him? Nope. It's even better, uh, You bro. know who takes the cake? John Logazamo, Mr. CRT. Yeah. Yeah, man. He's definitely up there. Vaxxed as fuck. Hashtag Team Pfizer. That's his fucking thing? Um. Okay. Washington, D.C. and Tampa. 1.4 million followers. Uh, what's he talking about? Oh, 19 shocking questions Republicans don't want answered about January 6th. Bro, it's so frustrating. Man. It's Re- so frustrating when they, they go this deep off the, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, you know, train. Like, I don't know why it upsets me so much. <laughs> Maybe because I was a I huge mean, wrestling fan when I was a I kid. mean, I'm sure some people look at me like that. Well, they do, they do, but man, you... Because they don't get it. They don't get it, but they also haven't taken the time to actually go look up the shit we've talked about. If you watch what he just posted, you could dispel all that by looking up what we've talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, you might think I'm crazy when I tell y'all January 6th was mostly a psyop. Like, the feds were involved, you know what I'm saying? Just go on Revolver.News, Darren Beatty them broke it down when it comes to... How when they tried to kidnap uh, the governor of of Michigan, those were all feds. And that was the test run where they were going to go in the Capitol and do all the goofy shit that they did. Um, Most of those people in in, uh, D.C. on January 6th, they were on some stop the steal shit. You know, they 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 weren't comfortable. They were there trying to make their presence felt. And um, they were dubious about how things were happening. It looked like a coup to them. Yeah. Meaning. Hey, we got to stop the steal. Look like they stealing this shit. You know, they cheating. And uh, <laughs> let's watch some of this, actually, because I, I don't know what the fuck this video is. New but. video. We love you. You're very special. Why wasn't Donald Trump evacuated to the terror attack bunker in the White House during the January 6th attack like he was for the May 29th, 2020 protest? How did the rioters know to target unsecured windows at the Capitol? How did they find Jim Clyburn's secret office? My question is, how did they know where that office was? Why hasn't a single Republican member of Congress that was involved with January 6th been subpoenaed? I'm the guy who came up with the idea of January 6th when I was talking with Congressman Gosar, Congressman Andy Biggs, and Congressman Mo Brooks. Poor Alex Jones. Planted pipe bombs outside Republican and Democratic headquarters the night before the attack. Mm-hmm. Why did Lauren Boebert tweet about Nancy Pelosi's movements during the attack? It is time for action to get Nancy Pelosi the heck out of here. Nancy! What advanced knowledge did the FBI have? Oh yeah, good question. Did the FBI simply miss the evidence? Or did it see the evidence and fail to piece it together? We're looking at significant felony cases tied to sedition and conspiracy. Why has Trump not been indicted for pressuring officials to overturn the election? Okay, Okay. Yeah. Um, Cool narrative, bro. But those are some good questions. And there are lots of Republicans that would love to see a fair uh, commission, Mm -hmm. committee, what have you. 
And that way y'all could find out, hey, feds, what did y'all know? Did y'all cause this? How many of y'all were feds? Because if you the feds, you should have been told us who put them uh, pipe bombs there. Yeah. Those conveniently, don't nobody know. And who were the cops who were leading the people to these areas that were unsecured? Yeah. And when when, when they requested a 10,000 National Guard, why were y'all like, nah, we good? Why did Pelosi and everybody turn it down? I think it'll be about, I think it'll be about 10 years before we get the whole story. Well, we yeah. probably won't ever have the whole story. But I think, I think like, I think some Project Veritas insiders will eventually in the next decade get quite a bit of the story out. Yeah, there's already a lot of shit like circulating. It just don't ever permeate yeah. into the normies uh, echo chambers. Yeah, I don't know how we've got on this subject, but these people are, are they've lost it, man. And Jocko was saying that as well. That's why, that's why we're talking yeah. about Jocko. He was saying there's, he's, there's literally two worlds, right? There's literally two movies taking place in this country and people are watching them through their own lenses and they don't see anything else. Yeah, they a lot of people think, um, you know, like we said earlier, they think Kyle Rittenhouse was a vigilante who was out looking for blood. He showed up at a BLM protest mowing down innocent protesters, right? And then January 6th was the saddest day since the Civil War 9-11. It was seditious insurrection and attempted coup. Going back to Schultz, though, like way to go, like you said, holding his ground and bringing, yeah, he didn't let it go. He didn't like give up either. He didn't like let Charlemagne have that narrative. Yeah, and that's and that's why I'm like, it's almost like uh, Schultz is probably like, look, dog, you know, I, I'm a big dog myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they're both busy. Like Charlemagne, I mean, um, Schultz just announced the Canadian leg All right. of his tour, of the infamous tour, Get Your Tickets Now. And um, Charlemagne has books and multiple podcasts and radio show, and, and he's always on CNN. He's always interviewing Biden. He's always in the mix with the Democrats some fucking goddamn where. <laughs> and um, so they're both busy. Yeah. And it just, it just seems like the show is a little like, I don't know if, if, if Charlemagne stays stuck on his ways and can't, his views, and he can't ever, I mean, he, he gave a little bit, like, oh, why, well, you know, uh, but, but still, it's like, well, why, uh, it's like, it's not illegal. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, why was he, because they're burning down his town, they told the cops to stand down, the cops have been, whatever the word is, like, disarmed, damn near, hands tied, can't do shit, and his homeboy hit him up, like, hey, man, we supposed to be running security. For, for this car lot. You know, I know they kept it funny when, when Charlemagne said, you know, why was he out there anyway? And Schultz was like, because he's a loser. He's a little dork. You know, yeah, he ain't yeah, getting yeah. no pussy. When in reality, he wants to be an EMT. He wants to help people. He was he was there in his mind for a purpose of helping. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where he could have gone. But he kept it funny. And the rest of it obviously went on from there. But, I mean, their facts are there. Charlemagne wants to see him. If he, I don't think he kept up with two and a half weeks of the case. I don't think he watched all of I don't think he the, follows Jack Posobiec. Right. No, no. He's following uh, Hawk Newsom or that guy from New York, the BLM leader. And, and here's another important uh, point about the Kyle Rittenhouse case is the way these, these three dudes that were shot, right, the way they were behaving and going about stuff like in a destructive manner, chasing people, provoking, burning, right? Mm -hmm. How much destruction and death was prevented when Kyle shot the motherfuckers? In other words, there's no telling if they would have burned down the car lot, how many more cars they would have destroyed, how many windows would have got broken, how many other people would have got shit. We don't know. Some of these, some of these dudes are rapists. Right. <laughs> some up. of the dudes that got shot, pedophile rapists. One of them said he likes to date single moms to get at the kid. And, um, you know, of course, normies don't know none of that. And, and, and like Charlemagne said, well, that shouldn't matter. That don't have nothing to do with this. Okay. Uh, how much destruction was prevented because Kyle put out that the Draco? That's a good question. That's a really good question. People, I would say a lot just by what ha actually happened. And, and yeah, and and I think that points to the fact that the narratives. There's two different narratives. Is these are innocent, peaceful it, Jojo, little Jojo, Fuck like Mark, Mark, Mark Ru Ruffalo. Yeah, man. Mark Ruffalo. Jesus. They called him Jojo. He liked his favorite color was purple. And he, you know what I'm he saying? He liked hot dogs. Yeah. Wink. His friends called him Jojo. What a dork. God Mark damn it. Ruffalo. Hey, I, like, like I said, man, when, when public figures get involved in, you know, political things, you know, you lose some people. <laughs> yeah, ask you. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, actually, but crazy thing is my Twitter following just keeps going up, 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 up. That's up. true. That shit just keeps going up. <laughs> and... 
how many of you goofies I had to sacrifice on my Instagram page. In ter- like, I don't remember what my numbers were at its peak. Yeah. But hey, if it was, let's just say I lost 19,000 or 29,000. Who gives a fuck? How many followers do you need, sir? Uh, I gained a lot. I'm able to motherfucking call out bullshit. That's my job. Um, speaking of comedy and Schultz's le- uh, can- Canadian leg of the tour, Midnight dropped a special on YouTube. Yeah, he put together, uh, he shot some stuff and um, be on the lookout for like one minute clips and stuff to um, to uh, be circulating. I think he said he was going to reach out to you. Yeah, or, yeah he or did. Juan he or did. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. we're going we're gonna to put those clips out. But yeah, The Diet Starts Tomorrow is on Midnight Comedy's YouTube page. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great That's name. A, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But you want, all right, let's get back on topic here, man, real quick, just because we have this uh, Amarion, what is it? Yeah, the, the Amarion variant? The B2K variant. The B2K. The Omicron, first of all, bro, they skipped over a couple letters because they didn't want to piss off China. You know, they actually, they said that? They they officially came out and said that? Yeah, and then they tried to say, well, she is a common surname. That's what they said. Okay. That's they said it's a common surname and, you know. It's also in the Greek alphabet. It's all know? for optics. It's all political. And it just so happens that that's what, it, it came out of a P4 lab. Like this whole thing, the whole bug. You know what I'm saying? The whole bug came out of this P4 lab, military lab, where we already know Fauci, who said, if you're attacking Anthony Fauci, you're attacking science. Oh, I can't wait to show this video. If you're attacking... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Ted Cruz? I gotta laugh at that one. Ted Cruz, what happened on January 6th? God damn, boy, y'all need that January 6th for everything. Imagine they didn't have that. It'd be y'all, falling apart even faster. Y'all need January 6th for everything. Y'all uh, use that for everything. Oh, yeah, what, well, Jan- January 6th? The first comment in this video is Delta, Omicron, Autobots, roll out, <laughs> Optimus Prime. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like Optimus Prime. All right, all right. Let's see what your boy... So this is... Actually, I actually haven't seen this, but I, I saw it circulating in a couple of tweets. So um, this is Dr. Fauci warns Americans to take new Omicron variant seriously. Go, Fauci. Earlier, I spoke to Dr. Anthony Fauci about the new variant, and I began by asking what is so concerning about it. Well, it has a, a constellation of mutations, Lester, around that spike protein, which would be strongly indicative that this will be highly transmissible and might in fact escape some of the immune parameters such as monoclonal antibodies and the convalescent serum and plasma when people recover and and likely even some protection from the antibodies that are induced by vaccination. So we're taking it very, very seriously. It's spreading really quite rapidly in South Africa. And then we're seeing cases popping up in countries around, particularly when there's been travel from South Africa or Southern African countries to other places like Israel and places like that. Meanwhile, South African officials released a statement saying that they don't believe that this is more dangerous. They don't believe that it is uh, anything to be highly alarmed about. And we haven't heard a word about those official statements from South African officials. Yeah, the ones that say very mild symptoms. Yes. No, because they need the Omicron variant, the Omarion. They need it to be able to blame like... Oh, economy's slow? Hmm. Y'all motherfuckers ain't vaxxed. And it's, now we got the Omarion. Or they'll be like, uh, supply chains are broken. Well, Omarion. You know what I'm saying? Like, anything, this illegitimate regime, and the debacle after debacle after debacle, they're just going to blame it on Omarion. B2K. Um, I didn't pull it up, but I think it was New York Times might have posted or, or LA Times. But there's, more, there's been more deaths this year with the vaccine than there was last year altogether and we've had the vaccine the entire 2021 yeah Uh uh-huh it's like okay yeah it's leaky and they're trying to they're trying to use this therapy number one they're marketing it as a as a as a vaccine it's a gene therapy yes and they change the definition of vaccine so that this thing and then they're like well it'll help prevent and then that didn't happen it's like well it'll help uh you won't land in the hospital as often and it's like uh (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's like where does it stop they're just they're they're using it as a tool it's like that's why we need to hurry up and get everyone on it and then everyone gets their boosters and then you get a passport and then you get your social credit score then you your money gets and then you put the chip in your hand uh there is a um this industry person that i've known for a long time 
and they love to chime in. They love to send me DMs. Like I posted this meme right here. Sorry, I'm jumping around. No, right? fuck it. That's because, my favorite part. Because this cat, man, he always he always got an opinion. So I, I posted this meme on my story where it's like the top of the glacier is a, it says critical race theory. Mm -hmm. And then under it, the big, big bottom of the glacier is Karl Marx's face and it says Marxism. So the little tip of the that you see is CRT, but it's really Marxism. Homeboy hit me up. He said, another scare tactic. I thought you were against these type of scare tactics. <laughs> it's like, wait, okay, well, teach your kids CRT. I don't want my kids. And, and the reason I brought it up is because the jab, the jab stuff, like I put, um, man, this is such an old, uh, see, it, it won't bring it up. Um, I posted something Gavin Newsom said. He says, uh, Texas has effectively banned a woman's right to choose, passed the worst ever suppression law in voter suppression law in the country, and continues to push anti science COVID laws that put lives at risk. Blah, 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 blah. And, he's, and he chimes in, facts. <laughs> and then I put up um, how breaking news Biden administration concerned as a Mayo Clinic study shows that Pfizer vaccine dropped to 42% effective. This is very old. This is since I put that in like August 12th. This boy said, that's why we need you all to get vaccinated to stop more variants from coming. You guys are now screaming about it's not as deadly, but we're trying to be proactive and not reactive. The world wants to stop it from evolving before it becomes more deadly. It's like, bro, stop falling for the bullshit. It's never going to stop. Like, if anything, mass vaccination creates the situation where you're, you're going to cause uh, more mutations. I don't listen to Glenn Beck a lot. I, honestly, I don't listen to him at all, but I do get his stuff sent to me quite often by fans of the show. Um, someone sent me this. A few people sent me this, and I figured I'd play it for you just to kind of get your take on it because I thought it was pretty interesting. Are you ready? This is 153 pages of the confidential agreement between Moderna and the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to 2015. What? Jason, what was happening in 2015? Uh, Frankenstein coronavirus. That's right. The same time Dr. Barrick and Dr. Xi published their paper on the new Frankenstein coronavirus. In fact, let's skip down to page 104. It shows that the NIH and Moderna were collaborating with Dr. Barrick. Wow. His signature is on page 106 of the Material Transfer Agreement. But let's get back up to the top of this specific agreement. The NIH appears to be transferring the mRNA tech to Dr. Barrick. But look what they want to make clear. Quote, mRNA coronavirus vaccine candidates developed and jointly owned by the NIAID and Moderna. Mm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen ulterior motives before, but usually you see them coming. Did you know that the government co-owns the vaccine? Oh, by the way, this is not part of the Trump's thing. This is, this is not part of that. This is 2015. Mm. The same government that is now mandating its use owns the vaccine. Mm. You ready? Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's another one. Uh, here's a periodic reminder that on March 28th, 2016, Peter Daszak described exactly what led to the pandemic. This could not be clearer, and yet we're still turning in circles because corrupt scientists and their media flunkies are still relentlessly pushing the natural origins hoax. This was on C-SPAN. Hmm. If I'm not mistaken, Natalie G. Winters is the one that found this. This is Peter Daszak. What is this shit called? Um world help no not that well the world economic forum no no that's klaus schwab um, right he's one of the people not the nih not ralph barrick at the university of north carolina uh it, it's like we cover so much this shit oh is eco health eco health eco health alliance yes yeah. all right here's peter daszak publicly on c-span telling you exactly what the fuck they did we found other coronaviruses in bats a whole host of them some of them looked very similar to SARS. So we sequenced the spike protein, the protein that attaches to cells. 
Then we, well, I didn't do this work, but my colleagues in China did the work. You create pseudoparticles, you, look, you insert the spike proteins from those viruses, see if they bind to human cells. And each step of this, you move closer and closer to this virus could really become pathogenic in people. We found mm -hmm. other pathogenic in people. Basically, all the shit that Fauci uh, denied. All the stuff like, no, we did not do gain of function. Bro, he just finished telling y'all, my colleagues in the lab in China added the spike protein to take these um, bat viruses. They took um, the backbone of the virus, manipulated it, made a Frankenstein virus, added the spike proteins, made it to where it could jump to humans. This shit was man-made, but a lot of y'all goofies normies in your echo chamber watching the view as i used to do y'all sitting here still thinking the shit come from soup meanwhile you got my 80 year old diabetic dad judging me talking about mijo and you're not vaccinated that's what you worried about sir that's as you drink your beer and you got diabetes that's what you worried about you worried about me that cabron, man. No, pues los pinches normies, güey. Los normies no hacen caso. And it's unfortunate that they've painted anybody who talks about, um, I guess, these non-mainstream type of things, like the way they were looking at Schultz on the right. thing. Like, they'll paint you as crazy. They'll try to paint you as illegitimate, racist, um, alt-right. I don't know what the fuck. But it's basically, I'm an American, and I would like to know... Did this shit come from a lab? Who the hell was all involved? Why did they do it? You know what I'm saying? And it'll help inform your decisions when it comes to trying to um, decipher how the media is, is either trying to uh, shame you, pressure you into doing something. You know who might know, you know, where this all came from is the science guy. Oh, Fauci. Not if Bill Nye, though. If you're attacking science, if you're attacking Fauci, you're attacking science. I'm going to try to jump around and find the exact point here. When he left. Staying on the job, when you become, I mean, you were personally, not just rhetorically, threatened. Your security, okay, your pause safety, real quick. your... Okay, I want y'all to listen to this clip and, and, and really peep how this interviewer, this lady from, uh, what is that? Axios. CBS. Oh, this is on CBS, yes. CBS Face the Nation. It was, it was T-ball, underhand pitch, softball. She was almost telling him, like, she was almost coaching him what to say. Not right. only was it a friendly interview, it was almost like she was helping him out. Or family. Yeah. H how did you deal with that? I dealt with it by focusing on what my job is. From the time that I went into medicine to the right now where I am <laughs> at my age, my job has been totally focused on doing what I can with the talents and the influence I have to make scientific advances to protect the health of the American public. So anybody who spends lies and threatens and all that theater that goes on with some of the investigations and the congressional committees and the Rand Pauls and all that other nonsense, that's noise, Margaret, that's noise. I know what my job is. Senator Cruz told the Attorney General you should be prosecuted. Yeah. <laughs> I have to laugh at that. <laughs> I should be prosecuted. What happened on January 6th, Senator? Do you think that this is about making you a scapegoat to deflect of course. from President Trump? Of course. Damn. You have to be asleep not Bitch. to figure that one out. Why How did that... Why'd you bring it Trump? Wait a minute. Home? Wait a minute. Do you think it's a scapegoat to take away from President Trump? Oh, yeah. You'd have to be asleep not to see that. Bro. No. No, sir. No, sir. The American public are hesitant because they don't trust y'all. First of all, the media is losing credibility and all this shit seems real fishy. We don't... We're not buying the soup theory no more. Look, if I tell you, yeah, I'm a little dumb, or, or like Alex Jones, I, uh, Joe Rogan, I'm a little retarded. Uh, there's one thing, but when someone is trying to make you seem like a fool because they think you're going to believe every that come, everything that comes out of their mouth, everything that's on TV, that should piss you off. It's because, bro, like, the building blocks of, of trying to walk somebody through how persuasion works, how the media works, like, 
the average person sitting around the dinner table and they're just trying to get the kids going into the bath and did you do your homework and honey what's for dinner and this is playing in the background this poison is playing in the background it will somehow subconsciously you won't catch you won't pick up on it yeah. like he'll just be like do you think you're just being scapegoated to take away from the fact that Donald <laughs> Trump <laughs> senator <laughs> what happened on January 6th senator <sighs> Republican senators uh, taking aim at this. I mean, yeah, that's okay. I'm just going to do my job. And I'm going to be saving lives, and they're going to be lying. It seems another layer of danger to play politics around matters of life and death. Right, exactly. Here it is. Exactly. And to me, that's, that's unbelievably bad, because all I want to do is save people's lives. I mean, anybody who's looking at this carefully realizes that there's a distinct anti-science flavor to this. So if they get up and criticize science, nobody's going to know what they're talking about. But if they get up and really aim their bullets at Tony Fauci, well, people could recognize there's a person there. So it's easy to criticize. But they're really criticizing science because I represent science. What? The <laughs> That's the name of his mixtape. <laughs> I represent science. Bro, man. I represent science. Come on. It, sir, uh, Fauci, if you're so concerned with the fact that you are you feel like you're being scrutinized and it can take away and it could politicize science, why don't you step down and let somebody else catch some arrows? Or as he said, uh, they're going to point your bullets. Now, fucking Neo from the Matrix is pointing bullets at him, apparently. I mean, their narrative, like you posted a meme, I think, on the What Did He Said page, where it's like a thread. It's like their <laughs> narrative, bro. I swear it's what it's hanging on by. The narrative, like a lot of people are like, bro, COVID is over, son. You know what I'm saying? Like if we had somebody like Rogan, like somebody like Joe Rogan, right? Or Jocko Willink or any of these people that are a little bit more reasonable. Um, I guess it, pretend Joe Rogan was a senator. Well, they they'd call him all kind of racist, so he probably couldn't be a senator. But like... Um, I guess if more of the average American understood the nuance of the shit, like, like for example, okay, y'all keep trying to paint Florida as, oh my God, DeSantis is killing people. No, he's making monoclonal, monoclonal antibodies available. Um, you know, they're, they're villainizing him as he's ruining Florida. He's killing people. They stacking up bodies. And it's like, meanwhile, you got Pelosi buying a $25 million house. Mm. Don Lemon out there taking naps with his husband. No mask and shit. And it, it ties back to the, uh, the Rogan, Jocko Willink podcast because he kept talking about how like, bro, why are they so bent out of shape trying to demonize monoclonal antibodies? It's the shit they gave Trump. You know what I'm saying? Regeneron. It's the shit they gave Tim Pool. They gave it to Aaron Rodgers. They gave it to me. He's like, we all beat the Rona. Yeah. He's like, it's damn near like a cure. Damn near. Jack was just supposed to this. I wanted to see it just because it looked like uh, worth watching. Gives you 27 times more protection against... Uh, in some studies that I've read, natural immunity gives you 27 times more protection against future COVID infection than a vaccination. And so we need to take all of the science into account and not selectively choosing what science to follow when we are making policy decisions. Uh, and I, I've been a proponent of vaccinations and, and wearing masks when we need to. And we had the Delta variant raging in South Carolina. I wrote an op-ed to my community and I've worked with our State Department of Health. I've run ads encouraging uh, my district to go and get vaccinated. And when we have these variants and we have these spikes to take every precaution from washing our hands to wearing the N95 or KN95 masks uh, more than the medical masks, there is a significant, statistically significant- uh, Who is that? that She's probably some representative, but, but check this out, bro. We're living in this weird time where the media, bro, is so is so toxic and like uh, tone deaf to where if you turn on the TV, they're telling you that everybody's dying from COVID. You got to hurry up, you know, hurry up and get vaxxed and this and that. Right. But then you look at college football on the weekend. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, OK, uh, Rogan made a great point. He said, bro, they won't let me perform at the comedy store. Cause I'm not vaccinated. Get He's there. like, meanwhile, I could go do an arena with 15,000 people in another state. Bro, what Joe Rogan did for the comedy store 
I mean, for comedy in general, but for the comedy store in that scene, yeah. is mm-hmm. it's sad what they've done. Resurrected it, brought it back to life. Made it, ba- um, I mean, you know, granted Mitzi had her, had the, she is the, the goat of that whole scene, but man, after the Mencia Rogan thing, and after him coming back, and all the comics he's helped, and that, that club alone, how he's helped, and now they're just doing yeah. them dirty like that. I think he like paid for their sound system. Yeah, like, all got, kinds of stuff. new speakers. Yeah. He loves the place, and it must feel... Uh, there's no telling what he feels when he's like, wow, what a fucking stab in the back. At this point, he probably just laughs like you bunch of dummies. Yeah. Like, enjoy your commie for you. Basically. We're going to pray for you. So this um, was, uh, that video was Nancy, uh, her name's Nancy Mace. She's a Republican, apparently, from South Carolina. And Jack Posobiec said, Two-Faced Mace. That's a great name. I hope it sticks, because uh, she's doo-doo. Yeah, man. So... Uh, once you start to see all these things, it becomes more apparent. Like, huh, why did they skip over the she? This, this is the she variant. But y'all don't want to call it that for political reasons. The she. You're going to pull up some statistics, look at some of the uh, countries with the highest vax rates? Uh, go ahead and read them off. Just read off the main countries and then the percentages. The, the UK is 80% fully vaxxed. 291% increase in cases since January 2021. The sources are gov.uk and worldometer. Singapore is 92% fully vaxxed, 347% increase in cases since January 2021. Source, our world in data and worldometer. Ireland, 91%, 18 and up, fully vaxxed, 482% increase in cases since January 2021. Source, the Irish Times and the worldometer. Vermont, 73% 73% fully vaxxed, highest in the U.S. Source, uh, New York Times and Worldometer. They have had a 531% increase since January 2021. Currently has the fifth highest infection rate in the country. Meanwhile, Florida's winning. Yeah. Killing it. Like, they're so goddamn healthy. Killing well, it. Meanwhile, the other states and countries are killing their fucking I mean, people. I mean, like, not enough. We've said this shit at nauseum. On one side, you have people, you know, promoting common sense type things, right? Like, like, hey, get you some sunshine, vitamin D, make sure you're supplementing, make sure you're not deficient. What's up with your vitamin, uh, you know, vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc. Um, I'm not saying keep some ivermectin in the drawer just in case, but, but it's like different people are getting different sources of information. Dude, I don't know if you follow reliable sources, which is the most unfitting name for brian seltzer's show on twitter do you follow that twitter handle uh, i don't really follow it. oh dude if you want some good laughs and some shit to really make some bits or jokes or just could have a good laugh i recommend you follow it um do you want to just pick yeah, one six uh steve bannon or uh or coronavirus or, or no crt which one of those three do you want to chat about anyone bro come on Any- give me one give me one give uh me. steve bannon okay and you're gonna say that Hold on, I gotta find. And th- I mean, this guy. It's funny when Hannity called him the Humpty Dumpty <laughs> of, of fake news. Hold on, I gotta Brian Stelter ain't got no ratings. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Rogan was like, "CNN, y'all need a whole new business plan." He's like, "Y'all are losing credibility. It's all like editorial. It's all opinion. It's all opinion shit. It's all opinion, but people take it as fucking fact." I'm not gonna obviously watch all of this, but let's see what he's got to say. It's Steve Bannon versus reality. Bannon, the former Breitbart chief and Trump aide, is a nexus of political nonsense. He thinks he's waging a war on elites when he's really waging a war on truth. As Daniel Dale put it recently, Bannon's popular podcast is a dangerous fantasy land of election lies. But that's not why Bannon has been indicted by a grand jury. He's been indicted for ignoring a congressional subpoena, a subpoena in connection to the January 6th investigation. Most Americans want to get to the bottom of what happened that day, but the Trump base does not. Ergo, Bannon flouted the House's attempts to question him. He kept on podcasting while the indictment news broke, and now he is well on his way to right-wing martyr status. Listen to the way Fox framed the arrest warrant news on Friday night. A ridiculous criminal indictment against Steve Bannon because he won't participate in the Democrats' January 6th political charade. The Biden Justice Department is transforming before our eyes into an armed political instrument whose main job appears to be punishing critics of the Democratic Party. What we're really facing is an attack or an assault 
on all of our basic rights. I call it the, uh, the insurrection crucifixion. <laughs> the crucifixion. Bannon as Jesus. There is a, religi- <laughs> it's a religious it idiot. thread to a lot of this. Flynn's out there this weekend saying, you know, the country should only have one religion, Christianity. But that's a separate story. It's important to know that Fox is not treating the ban. All right. All right. Yeah. It's all in how you see it. It's all in how you frame it. Um, some people see it as a show trial. Some people see it as like the, the DOJ is being weaponized to go after dissidents and any type of political enemies. Which we're seeing clearly. Clearly. I mean, the feds are too, too busy worried about moms in, at the school board. <clears throat> There was a story here locally in Round Rock that I wanted to dig into, but I, I don't. I didn't read about it. It's on my list to read about. But you know, armed. Uh, what do they call them? They called them armed uh, something. Went and arrested or, or picked up parents. They after. showed up. Yeah, they showed up with canine units and everything. Yeah. Obviously, we need to find out. Well, what did these parents do? Yeah, what did they, they say? do? Did How they, dangerous did were they? Did they run up in there with a gun saying, "Bitch, I'm gonna kill you, ho"? Totally different. Totally different. Yeah, um, that'd be something else. Hit the pause real quick. Orale. And we're back. If any of y'all have family members that like consume tons of cnn and corporate media let us know in the discord how are you going to try to like show that they lack credibility like you know what i'm saying like it, it, it amazes me it amazes me that so many people half the country arguably believe that biden is legitimate he's alert you know, he's doing a good thing. When we see people doing smash and grabs at jewelry stores and stuff at the mall, uh, it's because the root causes. You know what I mean? Like, we should look at the root cause. Like, <clears throat> like, hey, those are criminals. You can't do that. No, uh, Rob. Root cause. Rob, we need to look at the root causes. Oh, dude, Seth Rogen. What about him? Oh, my God, this fucking dude. <laughs> no. I can't. It gets this, worse? This How does dude it get takes worse? The, he takes the cake over Bautista. And Come Rob, on. All right, check it out. All right. Uh, Seth Rogen, whatever kind of weed you smoking, get you some better weed. It's not good enough. You get get you some better weed. Um, so Casey Neistat, you know, your Casey famous Neistat. YouTube vlogger. Okay. Yes, I was about to be like friend of the podcast, friend of the podcast, a la madre. Uh, you know the homie Casey. Yeah. Nah, he was like, he tweeted. Uh, it's a really fun, in, funny interaction. But Casey Neistat was like, our car got broken into. Like, shout out to the cops for helping us uh, find this motherfucker. We got our stuff back, and like, uh, he said, "L.A. is turned into a third world shithole of fucking crime ridden homeless weirdos." Right. Right. And Seth Rogen's like, dude, uh, like, relax, bro. I don't view my car as an extension of myself. Like, it's called living in a big city. Um, don't leave valuables visible in your car, and you know. He says, I've, I've lived here for 20 years. It's a great place. And he's like, sure, my car's been broken into over a dozen times. I don't view my car as an extension of myself. Don't leave valuables. He says, sometimes they'll even leave behind a cool treat. He's like, one time a dude left a knife in there. And so I got that. Right? This was on Twitter? Yes. Back, oh and, back and forth. Back and God. forth. And Casey Neistat, you know, I guess people, people got triggered because he said, shout out to the cops. Hmm. Some people don't like that. Uh, Help me get my shit back. And this is a third world shithole. And this fucking crime's out of control, right? And uh, and and it's like, Seth Rogen, you're fucking rich, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're rich. Like, what the fuck? Like, to you, it's like, it's all good, bro. People break into cars. You know what I'm saying? What an idiot. God damn it. So, yeah. So that woke motherfucker. Um, Here's what I was saying earlier, man. You have one half of the country that's just like, hey, man, we're not headed in a good direction. We don't like big tech uh, uh, with their censorship and shadow banning and, and trying to kill free speech. And you can't express yourself in certain political views. Right. They're attacking one entire half of the country, trying to paint them as white supremacists, insurrectionists, racist Republicans, whatever. And then you got the other crowd that thinks smash and grab is cool. You know what I'm saying? Um, they think there's not a problem with all the homelessness and the crime. Yeah, there's been a lot of videos going around of uh, like short store owners, you know, after they get back into the store after it's been looted, they're just you know posting the, the chaos and shit. And it's just like, what a bummer! Like, uh, yeah, you know, I'm sure some sh- insurances are involved in some of these things, but you got to think some of them aren't because some don't cover that kind of shit. And if they do, it's not to the degree where the business can come back and function. 
the left is delirious. Like, for example, uh, San Francisco Mayor Lauren Breed is her name, or London Breed. R- London, yeah, she's London fucking Breed. twerking it up and shit maskless. This girl ain't got no goddamn sense. Look, or she ain't uh, got no purpose, you know, twerking either. But go ahead. So Walgreens, I know, right? The fucking mayor. So Walgreens announced they're like, hey. We've had to do 46 times the amount of security at our San Francisco locations than the rest of the country on average. So we're going to go ahead and shut down X amount of locations because y'all's little fucking slap them on the wrist laws. Like you could steal $950 worth of shit, right? Mm -hmm. And get away with it and don't nothing happen uh, because of root causes. They say, we got to shut down these stores. London Breed was like, um, Walgreens, they exaggerating. There's still a lot of Walgreens left. They probably saying that because they opened up too many stores and it just wasn't, wasn't worth it for them. And they always got to twist up some shit. Like, lady, don't nobody want to live in San Francisco? Newsflash, y'all got human feces everywhere. There's needles. It's all kind of homeless epidemic. And what they don't acknowledge is that you have homeless people coming from all over the country to your city because y'all are nice to them and they can they run shit it's the tech yuppies and the homeless and then the people that used to live in the mission district whatever that neighborhood is called like all the black and brown folk are getting pushed out because the rent's too goddamn high and now austin is like i think the most expensive city Oh, I just saw uh, in form of the Anthony Post. Uh, Justin, Twitter bans sharing images or videos of private individuals without their consent just one day after the former CTO, uh, whatever Parag was named, CEO. One day, boy. Communists move fast, boy. Wow. So what is Twitter going to be like? It's already garbage. What is it going to be? It's just garbage without the image and videos that you were talking about? It's fun garbage, Rob. <laughs> we literally just put up like 10 tweets. You're right, you're right. Yeah. Uh, he actually he, he posted something else last night that I wanted to bring up because we, we've talked about L.A. and the L.A. Sheriff and we played that video last week. So the L.A. Sheriff uh, Villanueva sends a letter to the L.A. Board of Supervisors stating due to FBI, which, you know, take that with a grain of salt, due to FBI deep concerns for Fulgent or Fulgent uh, COVID testing company tied to Chinese entities. He is pulling the plug on the company um, on the company. The city said sheriffs must test with. Entering into a no-bid contract with uh, this company uh, and allowing them to have the DNA data obtained for mandatory COVID-19 testing, the unknown purpose has uh, shattered all confidence of my personnel having this entire or personal having this entire process. So basically, they're citing the, their serious FBI warnings to companies' links with the Chinese com, uh, Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences. <sighs> who, who, man, come on, man. We've been some of the main ones saying like, bro. We have to decouple from China. I mean, we if the if the, um, if the pandemic didn't show us, like, hey man, they got us by the nuts. He continued to say um, that company Fulgent Fulgent made no attempt to disguise the fact that they will use the genetic information obtained from sheriffs in future studies. Sheriff Villanueva has advised the board to continue with their own testing system. Who is in, who's in charge of this? Swalwell? You know, like what the I, fuck? Good question. You know what I'm saying? Who puts this company into place? Who, who, who looks for somebody who's got the ties with the science? What is it? The Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences? Why? They have so much influence, bro. They, they like everything from politicians, professors, scientists, the media, journalists. It's all honeypot schemes. And then there was a new thing with uh, Hunter Biden. They found out that this big, rich Chinese dude gave him like a like $21 million gem. Like all this payola shit, all this mm. quid pro quo you know, the stuff that uh, none of the news wanted to cover, just like the Ghislaine Maxwell case. So, I was saying earlier, if you have loved ones that consume The View and CNN and they believe all this stuff, how do you get them off of that? How do you show them that they lack credibility? How do we go about doing that? I mean, we've talked about this, right? You really can't get these people to... You can't change their minds. They have to change their own minds. So you would have to spoon feed them just crumbs or little droplets of something that has to shatter the narrative of whatever. For the Rittenhouse thing, you would think it's not that difficult to see, but that, even that might be too hard for them to comprehend. Pick something, like right? Like the, the COVID stats. <clears throat> when, you, when somebody tweets out that, like for instance, I think the LA Times, New York Times said that more people have died this year even with the vaccine having been available all year long. The first reply to that tweet reply is, well, how many of those deaths were unvaccinated? 
Like we're telling you 85% of the population is, what is it? You know what I'm saying? Like, why is that the first thing you go to when we're saying a, ma- a large majority of the population has been vaccinated and boosted on top of it? And, and let's not forget. And natural immunity is supposedly more effective. Let's not forget how this dirty media works. When Trump was in office, they had the counter on CNN. Look at how many cases, case number, case number, crank up that number, show the number, show the number, right? Because even the Project Veritas, they expose how the dude was like, oh, yeah, man, it's all fear porn, baby. Of course. Oh, yeah, it's gangbusters. It's fear porn, baby. It's gangbusters. Talk about a dork. As soon as, uh, I know, right? They caught him up on that damn Tinder. <laughs> as soon as Biden wins, take the number down. But now we have more cases. We got more cases, more deaths now than when, than when Trump was in office. Yet they were blaming every single case on Trump as if he was the one that gave them the taxpayer money and the funding. And he was the one in the lab in Wuhan. <laughs> no, Trump was the one that said, I believe it came from the lab in the Wuhan. Wuhan Institute of Virology. <laughs> they have a lab. And everyone's like, you think <laughs> he's fucking racist, this orange turd. You think this- when he first said that, people were like, Oh my God, he said that. Like, how many how many people were like, Oh my God, access to that out loud? Like, thinking like, Oh, we've got something we can like. The Democrats are probably saying like, We can use this to like drum up whatever we want to do, right? We have something that's gonna scare the entire country. And then Trump's like, It came from China. We can figure out where it came from. Uh, this is probably how we can deal with it. And they're like, No, 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 no. That's not what we're gonna do at all. It's gonna be a secret thing that no one knows about. It came from bat soup and the pangolin and blah blah blah. It's it's weird that we're going two years into this, <laughs> and it's still the same shit. No, they worry about January six. Um, and then, uh, when Trump was saying, you know, it came from the lab, I believe it came from the lab. They just said it's conspiracy. Like they all colluded the Lancet journal of science. Uh, of course, Fauci was sweating bullets. No, no, no. We cannot entertain motherfucker. We saw your emails, bro. But you still want to hop on CBS talking about (laughs) if you, if you're attacking Anthony Fauci, you're attacking science. Bro, we saw your emails, son. Ain't nobody buying this shit. We're America. We're free. We're not going to fall for this commie shit. This like, we do not want to live how China lives. We, this ain't the CCP. You know what I'm saying? We're not going back to feudalism. And, and like, you're not about to have us with this chip and the social credit score. Uh, Rogan mentioned it again. He's like, I'm scared of that social credit score. That's like his number one fear these days. I mean, yeah. They quieren like, ver la cara, la cara de pendejo. Well, man, I don't know, dog. I don't know. I don't know how we gonna red pill everybody when they think we're fucking crazy. And it's like, hey, I'm not. I'm not buying all the Fauci shit. I can't be done. Um, if you know, I don't think I ever would have really said this and meant it. But if we do see the country become two countries, I would not be surprised in our lifetime. How would you do that though, geographically? Whoever wants to be. I mean, supposedly, I, I forgot who did the poll, but it's literally fifty-one percent. Of the country wants to divide into two countries. 50%. 51%. And and the media, I'm sure, has played a big role in that. The media, um, motherfucking uh, social media. Yeah. Like, super, super divisive. I'm trying to look for this this person's page. I can't find it. But, um, bro, there's this meme where it talks about that, like, divide, split the country. Mm -hmm. It was so funny. I wish I had it. I might have had my soul send me a screenshot. But it was like... We'll have our guns, our God, our freedom, like... Oh, yeah. Oh, man, who was it? All it was, the dope shit. There was a... Am I, was it Senator Cruz? Yeah, it was Senator Cruz. It was like, okay, we'll take NASA, the oil, the military, uh, and then you can have fucking... Well, well it, was, it was hilarious when I saw it in meme form, because uh, it was like, we'll have God, I, I can't remember, freedom, guns, like dope shit. Yeah. And then it says... They'll have their pronouns. Bread lines. Yeah. Their pronouns, the fucking smash and grab, the fucking homeless, like, uh, you know, crime, all the shit that they want. And it said, and they, all, they could all share one big bathroom. <laughs> so to all the raza, I'm going to talk to the raza right now. All the food's gone wild people, um, anybody that identifies as Chicano, Mexican American, orale, Latino, all you brown people, right? You do understand some of the radical stuff going on on the left, right? The way y'all have been uh, trained and primed to identify because the Republicans, they've been seen as like, oh, man, you know, whatever. Old white dudes that are corporate and racist and whatever the fuck. It's, it's changed, right? Um, everybody, all these Rasa people that are like pro-left, pro-Democrat, 
you do understand you got all this other stuff over there, right? Like the the non-gender bathrooms and like at what point is some of this stuff going to get through y'all's head? Unless y'all just want to be woke like John Leguizamo and you just love every bit of it. You know what I'm saying? It seems like they do. It seems like they uh, they rather... And I was talking to a relative about this, which... I don't know about your your holidays. Talking to who? Relative? A, a relative about it. Uh, everyone, for the most part, like we all see everything the same, with the exception of like one or two people. And this one or two people weren't at Thanksgiving this year. Um, but it's just like when you talk to somebody who has family. Let's just say, for example, I talked to a relative who there's still family in the valley. You know, there's still family down south Texas, and and they're up on everything. Like, listen to Michael Berry. They actually, funny enough, my uncle, one of my uncles, was like. I mean, he's he's in his early 60s. He's like, I didn't know who Jingle Bling was for nothing. But then I heard the Vamos Brandon with Michael Berry, blah, blah. I was like, oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, but Mijo, you talked to, you know, you talked to some of the people down there and they just, they're Democrat hardcore. They just don't, they don't care. They don't get it. You know, if, uh, if they're getting assistance, there's no way they're going to turn their back on anybody that's giving them any kind of assistance. And that's just plain and simple. He goes, that's just, you're not going to change your mind. Yeah. <sighs> and here we are. And that's it. I don't know how. I don't know how motherfuckers going to wake up. Like, for example, George Lopez. If you're so hardcore on the left, why you ain't got your pronouns on your shit? You know what I'm saying? Why you ain't got the he, him? Put the he, him, bro. Go all in. Put vax this fuck. Put vax this fuck. He, him. Um, I'm going to put yee-haw or yee-yee in my pronouns. Yee-yee. Yee-yee. Uh, you know, vax this fuck. He, him. Uh, team Pfizer. Put all that shit in your bio. So... The character we did of the uh, White House aide, yeah. either him or Lefty Larry has to come back. And then it might have to be the White House aide or maybe Lefty Larry's an intern. One of those lefties, right? <laughs> there needs to be a situation, right, where he's um, either like Jen Psaki's assistant, like you'll cut to Jen Psaki and cut back to me. Somehow, some way, put them in a scenario where they're having to justify like the smash and grab and the crime. <laughs> like they have to be like, well, we need to look into the root cause. Co- you know, the root causes, <laughs> uh, the root causes of it all, because systemic, you know, systemic racism has made it to where uh, marginalized communities have had no choice but to run up in a jewelry store with a hammer and buy 80 other kids and break shit. It's like we're back in the 80s. That was popping in the 80s. You, uh, so Chino cut that down to like a minute, which is brilliant. You took out some of the best 60 seconds yeah, in that, in that like one, three minutes. I to it. Okay, cool. It was, it was good. Like whatever ended up on Instagram was hilarious in the comments. People loved it, right? Uh, this I should put the long version on YouTube, but go on. Oh keep, yeah, keep yeah, going. you keep should. Going. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of, I was trying to upload something yesterday and it kept saying <laughs> abandoned, uh, uploads. So I have to check. I don't know if it was a YouTube thing or what the fuck, but it wouldn't let me upload like the most recent Chingo chats on YouTube, but Anyway, wow. um, I wonder why why that why is that? I don't know. I even did the two two format. Uh, uh, you know that made you do the two factor author, uh, authentication fucking thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, inside baseball. Could that be it? I told um, Chingo last week, guys. Maybe you give us some feedback in the Discord or on Patreon. That Lalo, what, what was the last name? Uh, Alcaraz. No, that's the fucking artist. Which Lalo? Uh, the the character. The character. Ah, uh, Sa- uh, Lalo Sanchez. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I said Lalo is uh, is really Lefty Larry, like during the working hours, and then when he's not at work, he changes he's lefty the Larry. wig. Yeah, he changes the wig, or he I don't know covers it up or something. But either way, using both of those for that scenario you just painted, brilliant. Okay, I I already had uploaded the the one minute, the one minute version. Oh, that one got a thousand views. There you go. Nice. Well, that's a, you know that's a lot for me these days. Uh, Two thousand views on the woke. Thanksgiving, the dinner. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where it's like uh, all the characters are there. What about Mamalo? Mamalo Didn't you, did you not Mamalo, post the Mamalo, Mamalo one on there? Mamalo. Oh, him cooking and stuff? Yeah. No, it's not on YouTube. Oh. No, no, no. CBTV on YouTube, everybody. CBTV is the uh, new YouTube channel for Chingo Bling Media. Oh, man. So I, I opened up YouTube to see if, if I had uploaded the clip. Flagrant 2 clips. Casey Neistat and Seth Rogen debate crime in Los Angeles. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> How funny. Uh, listen up, goofies. Um, you ain't got to get red-pilled. You don't got to be awake. You ain't got to be based. But guess what? Depending on where you live, you could be like, ah, I don't like politics, fool. Nah, I don't like politics, fool. Okay, well, guess what? When, they, when this Omarion variant, when they get to using that shit against you, and they start to force mask you again. And, and depending on where you live, how commie it is, you can't have a cheeseburger on the patio no more. You can't go to the gym. You can't, you know, go to church. You can't sing in the choir. Like, what is this? 
This ha- so South Park dropped this dude on Thursday, the day before Amarion was announced. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet paper. People are freaking out over a variant. That's it. We're all out of chin diapers. Oh God, we're all out of chin, chin diapers. diapers. <laughs> 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 oh God. Oh God. Hilarious. Dude, genius. Hilarious. <laughs> Let it get um, go. So, so what I was saying is, if you live in L.A. or New York, we're gonna pray for you. Cause they these mayors are ruining y'all city, bro. The smash and grab shit, they taking y'all back to the 80s. You know what I'm saying? Like crime running rampant. Everything woke turns to shit. Everything woke turns to shit. Uh, we got some fan questions here, Chingo. Let's do it. Let's do this and then we'll wrap up, move into a Chingo. And chat. I'm gonna I'm go into these questions. And to these industry people that are so vocal. With me, like industry people, whether they're like a comedy show producer or like a radio person, when they attack me on my shit, I start to look at it like, wait, so you don't work. So all your comedians you work with got to be lefties because you you going, you know, what I'm saying you attacking me in my DMs or I take it as it like you mm-hmm. just critiquing whatever you, you nitpicking my shit. So basically all the comedians you work with, sir, they all got to be Democrat. Because the minute one of them says, I'm not buying Fauci shit, I'm, I'm through, I'm done with these variants, I don't trust China, we need to decouple, we need to bring back manufacturing, we need to close the border, we're in a fucking pandemic, what's up with this economy? So if any of them say any of that, you're going to start treating them the way you treat me? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Some of these radio people, these DJ people, like whoever, where they're like, oh my God, Chingo Bling such a fucking sellout. It's like... Okay, so all these rappers you got freestyling on your little podcast like, and this and that. Duh, 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 duh. The minute one of them says something that's like, and decouple from China, we need to make our own medicines. You're going to start looking at them crazy now they're no longer allowed. Anyway, all right, here go the questions. Um, okay, Juan, he said, this is all in our uh, Patreon. Yeah, it's a good time to mention. If you want to participate, sign up for patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales to get all the extra bonuses. You double your monthly content from four RPTs to eight, from four Chingo Chats to eight. And get familiar with Rockfin because uh, I want to I wanna give y'all a heads up that uh, Patreon is just, you know, we're not 100% so That's where we're at right now. Get familiar with Rockfin. I, I don't know how we're going to have to transfer everybody over, but I want to have a meeting in Austin real soon with the Rockfin people. Okay. We shall see. All right, Juan, he says, talk about the new virus strain and the continual jabbing from King Fauci. Yeah, it'll never end, bro. They want to jab us all. Yeah, we talked about that quite a bit. Okay, Luis Rivas, he says, uh, the new vaccine-resistant variant is here. (laughs) Ain't that a bitch? (laughs) CDC is recommending everyone 18 years and older to get a booster. Pretty pointless to me. Is this a ploy to get more jabs in arms? How soon do you think we'll be locked down again? As always, thank you guys for everything. The effort is much appreciated. Sass. I don't see lockdowns coming back like that again. Nothing I've seen or read indicates that. I mean, the fear that you see on, on the like mainstream media of uh, this variant from Friday to today does kind of give you that inclination. Like, that might be coming. It's winter. It's going to be another dark winter kind of uh, whatever. But I don't see that happening. Um, At least not here. Okay. Yeah, and maybe not red states. So when you have biden go on tv and he says it's a cause for concern not a cause for panic and you know lockdown how many times have we seen him do a 180 so i take everything he says as a grain of salt and as he says it i picture him saying the opposite the next week so is it because he just didn't remember what he said you think i don't know right but (laughs) i wouldn't doubt it if seven days from now y'all could quote me if seven days from now biden and Saki and them come on like, well, in an effort, this administration, you know, in, in an effort to continually keep everyone safe and protect. Da, da, da. These are the same people that were saying, hey, OSHA, Department of Labor, y'all need to go tell these little companies and shit. You got 100 employees, jab them up or else. So makes you think what it distracted from when they were doing that. Like, what did it distract them from when they were pushing all these unconstitutional things, whether it was the moratorium or it was the OSHA thing? Or it was, it was something else. Um, I don't remember. I mean, most recently there was the travel ban, right? There was, did you see the clip of her trying to justify? Yeah. She was just, again, it was just, word, you know, circles around she nothing. Was, she was saying when Trump. Yeah, yeah. When Trump, when Trump did the uh, travel ban, 
uh, he had did it in the context of a tweet of something or other. It's Calling like, it the China virus and some shit. Yeah. And okay, that's where it came from. And he was trying to say, hey, it's over there and it's coming over here. We stopping these flights. And let's not forget Fauci. And all those bureaucrats over there were like, no, 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 there's no need for that. Nancy Pelosi was in Chinatown talking about, come to Chinatown, turn up. Um, so to, to summarize that, I would not doubt it if de Blasio and Garcetti and uh, what's, the, what's, the, what's the guy's name from New York? Who, who's the governor? The lady. Oh, yeah. They got the governor lady over there. And then you got motherfucking, um, what's this, a Newsom guy. <sighs> I wouldn't doubt it that they're like, Oh, Marion is here. We need a lockdown. Mm-hmm. So if you live in a blue state, you might want to escape pretty soon and stop buying the narrative that like Florida and Texas and Tennessee are killing people and it's dangerous. It's like, no, we're thriving, motherfucker. Uh, Log G, he says, T.I. is very involved in politics. Is Chingo planning to be as involved <laughs> or is he focused on comedy? Comedy. Um, yeah, media, man. Uh, I do not want to get in politics at all. Matthew Carter, he says, when does the new Tom McDonald slash Chingo Bling <laughs> single drop? LOL. He goes on to say, what are the odds of an interview with Stephen Crowder, Joe Rogan, Candace Owens, or even Jeremy from The Quartering? Any other political figures you'd like to cross over with for an episode? <laughs> All of them? It. Yeah, I'd love to. And, and that's they, something we do want to work on for, you know, this downtime between now and the uh, 2022 tour. Hell yeah, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind none of that. Uh, Alex Chavez, he says, so... L.A. Sheriff Villanueva wrote a letter to the L.A. Board of Supervisors informing them that the Sheriff's Department will not be using Fulgent. You, you could, oh, we just covered this. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For COVID testing because of their ties to China. Yeah, we talked about that right before we started reading questions. Uh, Fulgent said they will be sharing DNA samples with the Chinese government. <laughs> what do you think about that? What would the Chinese government do with the DNA samples? Have you guys seen the new 007 movie, No Time to Die? They use DNA to create a virus in order to kill a person based off their DNA. Ah. A la madre. That's straight up China, well, like Westworld. It's what's going to happen. <sighs> Jesus Christ. We're going to have a Chinese shingo out there. Oh. Hey, I already get confused <laughs> as pil- Filipino sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you do. Victor Payares, he says, what do you think of the Walmart CEO, Jack Dorsey, and the CN? CNBC CEOs resigning all in the same day as Ghislaine Maxwell's trial begins. Coincidence or nah? Q made me reference to all these CEOs resigning. Many of the drops told us to watch the resignations and they've been resigning like flies. Anyway, I do think Q has been right about a lot of things and no way this is all coincidences. Also, are you guys aware of all the cryptic messages Dan Scavino has been sending the last few days? Who is Dan Scavino? I don't know. They trapped them all and soon the floodgate of evidence will be unleashed. (laughs) Also, Trompas is putting out the most gangster statements. Yesterday, he challenged the media on a debate about all the fraud evidence coming out. Huh. And this morning, he put out a statement saying that if liberal states don't stop the smash and grabs happening, the National Guard should be sent in to control the chaos that's forcing many stores to move or close permanently. Like Q also said, we winning big. Huh. Um, okay. There's a lot right there. Yeah. Um, I don't... I, wow. Okay, Walmart CEO, was he on the plane? Uh, Jack Dorsey, was he on Fuck Island? I believe so. Really? Yeah. Was he on that list? I, we actually read the list, didn't we? You know who else was on the list? I, I was reading old articles. They had, which I don't know if it's true because I didn't see it, but they had Steve Bannon's name on that list too. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> There's probably fake lists. Certainly. I'm sure. And what? where did you see that one? It was Yahoo News. And they put Steve Bannon's name on it? They put Steve Bannon in the, in the, in the title. <laughs> they didn't, I didn't see a oh. list though. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and CNBC CEO resigning. Um, I don't know, man. They might have other reasons. I I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. People were sending this too about like ah oh, crazy all these CEOs, and I hadn't I didn't I didn't know this. I didn't know any of this other than Jack Dorsey. I didn't know who else had stepped down or who was you know whatever. Yeah, it is a weird coincidence, right? We'll keep an eye on that. Here's here's the part really caught my eye. Trump putting out them statements. Challenging the media to debate uh, to a debate about all the fraud evidence coming out. There's a lot of anomalies. I love when Jocko and, and Rogan talked about it. It's like, yeah, and pff, you know, people yeah, just I'm gonna post that clip next. They're glaring over it like nothing. And then he said, um, I love this part. He said, Trump made a statement saying that if the liberal states don't stop the smash and grabs, National Guard gotta step in. Um 
Yes, because it could become an epidemic. It's this culture that, you know, the left has been bailing people out, covering for people, um, you know, defund the police, all these radical, extreme leftist things. It just looks like they're just trying to destabilize everything, some type of weird, woke future communism. I don't know. Like, what's the goal? Like, how can y'all not? It's so crazy, right? It's like, pay attention to how the media covers the smash and grabs. Like, how is the left stream, you know, the left wing media? The left stream. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> the a- lane stream. <laughs> like, how is um, CNN and all them? Are they just like, oh, and some, uh, like the way they say the car drove itself. No, man. It was a black supremacist. Yeah. Super racist dude weirdo who wanted to kill white people cuckoo out of his head he said it several times in many ways like in raps in tweets in posts he even said some shit like how to run people over and get away with it type shit um just the lawlessness and remember one thing that they tried to frame trump and and make him seem like a really bad person was when he paid for the ad it was like eighty thousand dollars reportedly in the paper in new york when the uh central park five that has all been debunked. If you go back and read the ad that Trump put out in the 80s, he was basically saying something like this, like, whatever happened to the old New York, whatever happened, we need to make New York safe again type of thing. We need to back our police. If you go back and read the ad, he didn't say, hang these five little black boys. He was saying, like, we need law and order. We need to back the police. Um, and at the time, a lot of people did think them kids were guilty, and some still do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some still do. Some whatever. Uh, it's neither here nor there. They've been exonerated. Um, but that thing was spun into, like, he's racist, and he's calling out the Central Park Five. All of a sudden, they brought that shit out in 2016. Like, man, <laughs> this man was kicking it with all kind of black people. All right, Victor Bayadis goes on to say, oh, and did you guys see the video of a kid yelling at Jill B to shut the fuck up while she's reading to them. I'll post it on the Discord chat. The kid deserves a gold star every day. That video actually was edited from a previous... It was another video, so it was kind of Photoshopped or whatever you call it. It was edited to, to make it sound that way, but that did happen somewhere else. Did you see that? It was probably a year ago, but it was either at a school or a church or something, but the adults talking and the kid in the back's like, shut the fuck up. Oh, wow. So it's like Jill reading to the kids and then well, in the back you hear, shut the fuck up. First of all, she was the only unmasked person like all the kids of course <laughs> everybody's not gonna have a mask on. everybody was masked um she was not i don't understand the science there the rules like is she like well i'm i'm vaccinated therefore what is the rule for a little while that was a rule like if you get vaccinated you ain't gotta wear a mask and then it's like okay psych you know what i'm saying psych um, how many times <laughs> There's so many things Strange that, that just said psych in their head. I can just see like the double masking and the 15 boosters. And then it's like psych, you need a 16th and psych, you need a third mask. Yep. Um, Who would have thought? Who would have thought this is what we would be and, talking and about? It's like if you look at, check this out, y'all. Especially, especially all my Latinos, right? Because sometimes we just seem to be the main ones. Us and black folk, we'd be, we be the main ones brainwashed by the Democrats and the left. If you look at some of the left ideology, picture like a pot of menudo, right? Okay. You, you're throwing in defund the police, you th- which some people are like, well, that's not literally what it means. They'll try to talk their way out of it, right? Uh, and I'm not for police enforcing bullshit laws either. Right. Like, I'm not down with that either. Nope. Um, so you have in this menudo pot, smash and grab, uh, bell reform, where you could like run over your baby mama on a Friday, get out of jail, $1,000 bond, and then go run over 60 people <laughs> on a Sunday, right? And then the news is going to cover for you. So what else? Sprinkle in, smash and grab, homeless. I mean, these weird policies, right? Like lockdowns, mandates. Who wants to eat that soup? No freedom. Dude, 51% of the country, apparently. 81 million people. 81, 82 probably. Of this, you know, who knows? Boy, speaking of these lockdowns, I'll play this last video before we get out of here, um, <clears throat> because we have referenced the Prime Minister of New Zealand a few times. Listen to her. Uh, listen to her here and see if you appreciate the message, Chingo. If you were, let's just let me set this up too. If you were in New Zealand, tell me you wouldn't appreciate the old, the the Lord, the High Lord Prime Minister tell you this. 
And importantly, because I know this is a question many Aucklanders have, you can now see family and friends again in their homes and use the bathroom inside. Luxury. <laughs> I don't get it. What, what, what? She's telling you, uh, you couldn't use the bathroom inside? Well, I, this, because this is a 20-second clip, I'm assuming that if you are vaccinated, because you have to be vaccinated to go anywhere, right, you can now see your families. And while you see your family, you can also use the restroom inside. So you weren't allowed to use restroom inside? Oh, no, no. What, do you, what was the rule? You're not supposed to be at your relatives if you're not jabbed. And what does the restroom have to do with anything? It's inside their house. Mm. Okay. <laughs> uh, here's what really grabbed my eye. That poster next to the New Zealand flag. Where of course, it says, your passport. It, so the messaging here, it, it's not only is she breaking down rules and what you're allowed to do and this and that. It says, unlock the things you love. And it's a little image, like a logo of a cell phone with a little check mark, which is the Chinese model. This is their system of ultra surveillance, social credit score. You can't get out of line. You can't say nothing. You can't critique shit. And it has this logo with this propaganda saying, unlock the things you love. Basically, we're going to use this bug to take away your freedoms smoke you out of your cave, make you fucking cuckoo and desperate, and then bird feed you your fucking freedoms back to you in exchange for, you're going to put this shit on your phone, boy. You're going to have this shit on your phone. We're going to have all your biometrics. We're going to surveil you. It's a facial recognition. Congratulations, lefties. This is what you're pushing. This is the worst element of the left. Like, I can, get, I can let y'all get away with some of the shit, right? Because... All the center left, stu- center left, like socially progressive, mm. socially liberal, like, I mean, I think most people can get down with a lot of that shit, but that weird shit where it's like, we're going to bird feed you your freedoms back, but in exchange, you have to adopt the Chinese model where they're on top, you know what I'm saying? They're the center and, and, and pretty much... This uh, C- the CCP, which is like illegitimate. It's not really like their government. It's not really doesn't represent the Chinese people or their culture, anything. It's illegitimate. They operate more like a gang, like a cartel, like a mafia, like a mafia. So imagine a Chinese mafia who has a lot of money and they rule the world because they fucking use slave labor and they they control the supply chains and they play dirty. For who, whoever's listening doesn't understand the way China or the CCP operates, they steal your tech. It's like the seven deadly sins, to quote Dr. Peter Navarro. They steal your tech. They bootleg your shit. They don't play fair. You know what I'm saying? Uh, trade. Uh, they pollute. They pollute like a motherfucker. Meanwhile, they got you over here talking about, we need to go green. Meanwhile, you know, the United States is like, should be the gold standard, not, not, not quoting these Scandinavians or referencing these Scandinavian countries or uh, these, you know, socialist type uh, countries or like Bernie Sanders and these people, AOC and, and Greta like to reference. I don't know why we use Greta as an example, but we should be the gold standard about how we take care of the, the pol- uh, pollution, how we take care of the earth, how we take care of a lot of things, how we take care of our country compared to China, for instance, or a lot of other places. But instead, we're villainizing. After listening to Jocko's podcast, and I'm going to go back and listen to it again with Rogan, I firmly have always felt and believed and still do that if Americans wanted to do anything, they could do what Jocko's doing right now. They could make it American-made. They could bring jobs back here. They can make you want to be proud of where you were born because you should be. All right, check this out, bro. I described to Marisol a, a vision, like a nationalist future, where, for example, um, a future where if you were going to buy toys for your kids... Let's just say hypothetically it was called like, um, uh, uh, there's a company called Melissa and Doug, right? I don't know where their shit's made, but they make a lot of like wooden toys, stuff like that. Imagine if there was like, oh, Melissa and Doug, that's the American toy company. And pretty much 99% of all American kids will have, will grow up with these toys that are American made. They have uncles that work at these factories. They might have a tia, a prima, like, like, um... It's just an accepted thing that these are good, long-lasting, educational, whatever, durable, safe. 
Because ain't no telling what kind of paints and shit they using in them Chinese factories. They probably like, bro, this shit going to America. Mm-hmm. Use that cancer lead paint, whatever. Like, who cares if these kids put the Legos in their mouth and this and that, right? We have no fucking control. Who do you think has better quality control? Not the CCP exactly. with, with slave labor. Um, but 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 let me describe this this future as we wrap up and then uh, probably take a lunch break, real quick snack e. break, and then do another episode. Um, I want to describe this future. So imagine a nationalist future where like most American households have like a Mike Lindell pillow in their house, right? Yeah. American made. Let's say most Americans, if they're going to buy a pair of boots, they're going to get one of Jocko Willink's, uh, what's the name? Origin? Uh, I believe so. I forget the name of his company, but like imagine if it's like, oh, um, Adidas and the Yeezys, they now make uh, some of their wave runners, whatever those fuck sneakers are called here in America. They're made in like Minneapolis or something like that is kind of the future that you're Steve Bannon's. The Peter Navarro's, the Trump's, the uh, make America great again, the hire American, buy American. Bro, we will be so prosper, so prosperous if like we control the border, keep it safe. You know what I'm saying? Um, reward those that want to come in legally. I know. I never thought I'd be saying this shit. But, you know, <laughs> I'm 42 now. We will be so prosperous, bro, if like we made more shit here instead of, you know, offshoring our manufacturing how popping what did detroit used to be detroit used to be like the city of the future like a overabundance like every general motors ford chevrolet buick chrysler whatever all that shit was made in michigan like even my grandfather on my mom's side ended up in michigan working at one of those motherfucking factories all that shit went away now you got I mean, you could have bought a house for like a thousand bucks in in Detroit. Five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks recently. I didn't want to hit them with the five hundred because <laughs> people are like, "Oh no, there's no way." Yes way. Um, I mean, just weeds growing over stuff, abandoned. Just uh, and then the textiles. They talked about that the textiles industry in New England. You know, it was the same thing. It's just now it's empty buildings and factories, and it's just like wow, crazy that that happened in the span of what three four decades. And uh, Jocko said, "We're one generation away from losing." that knowledge and information so i just want to end it with that this vision of like hey that doesn't sound so bad like pretend lego was an american company mm-hmm. i mean i'm trying to give you an example let me give you an example and then we'll wrap up with this yes. i promise uh mattresses we're looking for new mattress you know there's a huge american-made uh factory here in houston do you know which one it is it's called like texas, texas mattress maker yeah. i wasn't familiar with them uh well i mean i kind of i'd heard it I, but i bought from them have before. you yeah uh-huh. it's all like you literally pick it and they make it for you and have it ready in like six or seven days right it's all like all the fact the one off navigation and katie yeah. there's a bunch of them that's the one navigation and they just they make your shit right there in-house and it's people here from not only this country but this city and state that are making these quality products okay i'm gonna put them down on my list i put them down for on my sponsors own. right we, we need to reach out to companies that we really do believe in and that we want to uh have them be the the, the vision of where other companies go yes we need to make a list like think of a good like Anything from a coffee company, a, a supplement company, a CBD company, like stuff that we use, American made, local. That is how America is going to bounce back and be the shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we need to like snap out of it, stop being so divided, get off of the corporate media. Yeah, we should be able to rely on each other, not, you know, these entities across the, the globe. I guess, I don't know, man. Maybe uh, somebody made working uncool. And making stuff uncool. I don't know how, why, but everything got shipped off by people, politicians from both parties. Yeah. The unit party. It was Republicans just as much as de- Democrats trying to fucking save a nickel and ship off everything everywhere else. So. Great episode. With that being said, y'all take care. Keep your head on the swivel. Look out for the okie doke. And figure out how you're going to red pill some of your friends. Start by joining Patreon. You know what I'm saying? Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. Y'all be safe. Peace.